Growth and uh, Joshua Otolva. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Let me start with you, um, Joshua. The Rising Woman. What is it all about? What is new this time round? Well, uh, the Rising Woman is uh, a project that uh, we've been doing since 2018. All right. And uh, we've been doing it with our partners, uh, mm. DFCU Bank and uh, Uganda Investment Authority. Mm. And uh, basically, the Rising Woman is uh, an initiative that uh, seeks to empower women. Uh, to promote uh, a culture of uh, uh, a culture of mentorship among them, mm. but we do this through uh, trainings. Uh, we also do have uh, a proposal writing competition for them, where they get to compete, and at the end of the day, they have something to win. And um, uh, like I said, we've been doing that since mm. 2018, and this year we've come back uh, bigger mm. and better. And um, uh, you recall in 2019, mm. when we last had, for example, the proposal writing competition, mm. uh, that's also when we last had the regional trainings where everyone was involved, where it was open to all women, because mm. with COVID, we could not gather women uh, like before. Mm. So this time round, it is back. Uh, the women out there, the proposal writing competition is back. You have a chance to win 10 million mm. shillings for the top three, and that is a total of 30 million mm. shillings. So there were 30 million shillings up for grabs. And uh, uh, there is also a chance for a mentorship trip mm. outside the country. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, the top 10, we always take them for a mentorship trip. Mm. But also we brought something more exciting, mm. that is the DFCU business caravans. And for that, uh, Ruth will talk about it. Indeed. Uh, before Ruth tells us about the <coughs> DFCU business car uh, caravans, we'd like to talk about uh, the women within the rural settings. Yes. We're talking about women entrepreneurs. Many of them are in the far-flung areas. And yes. if we talk about far-flung areas, we're talking about high levels of illiteracy. Mm -hmm. This project is largely focusing on people writing proposals. Mm. These illiterate women or semi-illiterate women within the rural areas, where mm. does this leave them? Aren't they left out? The fact that they can't write proposals and so forth, and we're leaving them out? No, no, no. Actually, what we've done mm. is that uh, these proposals, mm. uh, they are open to everyone. Uh, we have a number where you can always call mm. in case you need some guidance. But also, the trainings that we are doing, mm. they are Main, many of them we've tried to capture the upcountry women. Mm. Uh, for example, next week we are in Lira. That is where the very first training nice. is going to mm. be. So in Lira, uh, I, I want to call upon all the women in Lira and surrounding places to come. And then also have this physical interaction. But also the B DFCU business caravan is here to sort some of those. Mm. Because with this direct contact with the customer and the, and the bank, mm. they have a chance to ask each and every question mm. they like. Because if we left it, say, entirely on digital, it means says, a lady who has uh, a capability kind of phone mm. is left out. But now with the DFCU business caravan, You're going to them. it will go mm. to the people. Like and now that. the people can ask you can speak in the in any language. We mm. have our yeah. teams up country that will be stationed where the training will be. Mm. So you can interface with them. But mm. also those that can uh, uh, look look out for the advert. Mm. We have a number that has been put there. I'll also give it to you as we conclude <coughs> later mm. on. So so you can always call and we guide you. All right. Uh, Ruth, as I said, uh, talk to us about the state of the women entrepreneur within this country before and after the COVID-19 pandemic. What is the economic stature as we speak? Mm. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's good that you actually bring out the issue of uh, women, uh, especially post-COVID. During COVID, we know businesses were strongly hit. Mm. Uh, now, women entrepreneurs actually were hit even the more. Uh, we've seen um, uh, recently, statistically, we are looking at about uh, employment levels. Uh, we have about uh, 2 million people that are employed by women uh, SMEs mm. and so imagine the state of all those employees what they are going through after mm. the businesses have been hit uh, so one of the things that we've done as a bank is that um, since 2007 actually mm. we mm. have strongly come out to say we want to support the women uh, in business mm. so we have uh, run this program for us like I said since 2007 mm. and this program targets um, the women professionals the women in, in agribusiness mm. uh, but also the women in trade and so what we do is that we facilitate financial literacy but we also give uh, 
financial services oh, and see. now so like i said earlier on we do offer financial services and the non-financial mm. services so under the non-financial services is where we do business advisory mm. that's where the caravan that joshua talks about is actually coming from as well to say how do we support uh, these women mm. to access finance to kick off mm. and bounce back even after the effects that they've suffered during Indeed. COVID. so uh, one of the things that we have done is to also set up a women in business advisory center a DFCU bank at our head office. So that's where I've been running on appointment <coughs> sessions with women entrepreneurs who want to ask, uh, uh, mm. give, uh, get advice for um, uh, setting up a business, formalizing it, mm. uh, but to also help them to facilit uh, facilitate access to finance, affordable actually financing that we give them. Uh, but what we are saying right now with Rising Woman, we, we've said we want to take that setting from Kampala and take it to the regions. So, Thank you so part much. of what mm. we are going to be doing with um, mm. Rising Woman after the UIA trainings, we are going to have a component of what we've called Women in Business Caravan. And what we shall be doing specifically is to have one-on-one -on -one engagements with the bank staff, mm. but with also experts in the legal sector, mm. experts uh, of uh, quality assurance from UNBS, for mm. example, uh, so we, we want to have a one-on-one -on -one session with these women to say, if you have challenges in collateral, for example, how do you access, if you have challenges interpreting a legal contract with your suppliers, but also contracts of the bank, mm. for example, okay. if you're accessing finance, how do you go about that? Wha how, how can we help you understand uh, your, your business management and financial management? How do, you enable, how do we help you to scale up okay. your, your business? Mm. So... Uh, overall, we are looking at uh, helping even them validate their business models. Uh, so there's really much more that we are doing. Mm. But specifically, for Rising Woman, we want to take this setting to the different centers. Okay. Ruth, as I said, what was the economic stature of the business woman in 2007 vis-a-vis -vis when you joined Rising Woman as Women in Business Initiative, when you joined Rising Woman in 2018? What is mm. that, the economic stature of that woman? And what is the economic stature of the uh, the businesswoman now after mm. the economy has been reopened mm. those are three people that we are talking about 2007 mm. 2018 and now so the economic stature okay so in 2007 mm. one of the reasons we actually started this program mm. was uh, to target um access to uh, barriers that were affecting women uh, uh, to access financing mm. now one of the critical barriers that uh, has been there was collateral I see. Uh, so women, uh, most of them uh, uh, would come to the bank and then they definitely have chattels, for example, those are movable items. Indeed. And then considering what we look at to onboard them for financing, that was a big barrier. Yes. So we came in to say, how do we, um, how do we uh, uh, craft out, ta we tailor make products that are targeting those, w those women. And so facilities like unsecured um, loans, loans mm. uh, came up to target that, that woman then, but also that's when we brought in the component of non-financial services mm. to say, how do we now uh, prepare you legally? Because one of the other barriers also was that former both businesses were, uh, are largely informal mm. for the ladies. So we, we say, let's prepare you, help you to uh, register, uh, so we onboard different uh, suppliers that will help you, take you through the process, understand it. So as we move to Rising Woman, we, we, we still feel that there is much mm. emphasis that needs to be um, given by the banks, but also with the different partners that we bring on board mm. to say, how do we now uh, promote the marketing of uh, women and create uh, outside the normal, the normal mm. business um, but uh, mandates that the women work within, mm. how do we promote them to, s to, to do, uh, for example, market linkages. Uh, so we do uh, B2B linkages. We promote customer service trainings mm. for them. We help them to uh, uh, do networking with uh, women who have actually made it. Mm. So uh, that's what we've been doing. All right. Now, are we saying that the women in business are now doing better off than the other years? Now that we are talking about reopening, full reopening of the economy, the night economy is now running, the SMEs are actually 80% women. Are we saying they're now better off? So, um, okay, consider, 
we we we've seen um, we've seen majority of the business women mm. um, now mm. accessing finance mm. uh, as a result of that. Nice. We've seen them. Uh, we've seen some growth uh, in terms of business uh, models for the women. Mm. We've seen uh, statistically right now women um, are having uh, about four percent of the SMEs. Uh, I mean. 34% uh, of uh, SMEs in Uganda being women. Uh, so we are saying, how, how do we even support them further? Mm. So we are not yet there, per se, and that's why the program still exists mm. at the bank, to say, how do we even uh, onboard more women uh, into the banking system formally, but also extend the, na the, the advisory services mm. to them that would enable them, enable them grow? So yes, whereas there's been some movement, but there's much, much more work mm. to be done in terms of handholding these women. Indeed. Mm. And of course in 2019 some business proposals came through and many of these women were taken to Kenya. Yes. Um, others were given some cash, 15 million, some mm. uh, 10 million and some 5 million for the first three runners up. Yes. Are we saying that uh, the entrepreneur in Kenya is better than the entrepreneur in <coughs> Uganda? Is that why we are taking our women there? I thought it was vice versa. <laughs> I thought we were doing better than the Kenyans. No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, um, uh, <coughs> what yes. we do is uh, we, we want to always benchmark with our peers in the region. Mm. You see see um, it's always good to know what your neighbor is doing better and mm. also literally speaking uh, the Kenyan economy is uh, more uh, adverse mm. than the Ugandan but we are happier than yes. the Kenyans <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, happiness Indeed. is relative <laughs> yes so um, yes. We, we, we want to understand mm. what are other people doing elsewhere in the region yes Joshua. um Rwanda is also, best practices yes Rwanda mm. is also one of those countries that are doing better lately in terms of uh, uh, their business uh, uh, management mm. and um, it, it's not that Kenyans are really better off mm. but it's also good uh, to understand how are the others doing it. Mm. So if we know what the others are doing, we can always fuse, pull up our uh, yes, mm. or pull up mm. and, uh, and uh, do better. So the Kenyans, um, what are they doing better that we are but, not doing? But also I want to mention Go ahead. that uh, the Ugandan women mm. Um, I, I referenced the 2019 report from MasterCard Foundation. Mm. Uh, this report highlighted that uh, Ugandan women, uh, you, uh, actually, uh, we have the most women-led uh, businesses on the face of the globe. We do. Mm. Yes. And uh, what that means is that actually Ugandans are more entrepreneurial. Indeed. But where I think we are not doing good mm. compared to our Kenyan counterparts is to maintain this business uh, to see the first and second birthdays exactly mm. so you see that the rate of death of our businesses is actually higher than say if you looked at the kenyan mm. side much as we have so many businesses that come up uh, probably you have 20 that come up in uganda five in kenya but the five in kenya you'll find mm. them even after the next 15 mm. years and then in uganda when you go back next year to do probably uh, an uh, uh, a, a, an existence audit, mm. you'll find that some of these have vanished. What's making so these Kenyan businesses more resilient to the times than the Ugandan businesses? Um, the Kenyans, mm. uh, we, the, it, it, it is a whole lot of effort mm. uh, from all stakeholders. Uh, that that uh, uh, comes from mentorship, right. uh, the kind of training they are getting. When you say mentorship, what exactly do you mean? Uh, mentorship is that uh, uh, you, you benchmark from the who, who, who those who are doing better than you. Okay. Uh, and then you to can... To give you advice. Yeah. Advice. Mm. You right. learn from them. Mm. So you'll find that ke there are so many successful Kenyan business women Indeed. that other peers can learn from. Mm. And also, uh, we want to create that in Uganda. The Rising Woman has created a database since 2018. Mm. Mm. And uh, the women that we've worked with, uh, our winner in 2019, for example, um, Sandra... Uh, a junk. Mm. She's doing quite well. Uh, we had we had her the other day at the launch, and uh, the reason we bring these people is to to show the other women that it is possible. Mm. You can do yes, it. Yes, you can do it. Even if you're in leader, even if you're in a cavalry, mm. you can still do it. Mm. There is an opportunity for you. Yes. What other factors actually are leading to the reasons we are talking about? The fact that our you know, businesses are not seeing their first and second birthday. Ruth Asasira, besides uh, the issue that we are talking about, poor mentorship and so forth, poor financial literacy skills, what else are the embedding, you know, impeding factors leading to this problem? So um, one of the critical aspects mm. also for business is uh, capital. Capital. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of, there's still need... Um, 
for us to do models mm. um, that uh, help to kickstart the business, uh, the businesses generally, uh, but specifically those for women. Mm. Uh, so uh, access and affordability. So it's one thing to have, for example, affordable financing for the uh, businesses, mm. but then also make it accessible. So if you make it affordable, don't uh, put a lot of criteria around mm. it that will now limit mm. that lady to access it. So uh, it's one of the reasons we are saying now we, we, we need to promote um, financial products that actually speak to the different segments of the women. So a woman who is a trader, a woman who is, for example, in the agribusiness at the production level, how do you facilitate uh, their business financially as an institution? So we are one of the other challenges. It's actually access mm. to, uh, to capital, uh, but I also am here to, to reassure the ladies that um, it's possible mm. with uh, DFC Women in Business. So we are ready to uh, understand your business and also give you that kind of support financially that will help you to kickstart and scale up your business. Joshua Twaloma, a woman who is out there and is interested in joining this initiative, what do they have to do? What is the criteria to be followed? Uh, first and foremost, the rise participation mm. in the Rising Woman Initiative is free. You, uh, no one is judged to Indeed. be part of this. Mm. And uh, uh, we have a number that you can call. Uh, but also you can reach out to any of the DFCU branches countrywide mm -hmm. or you can also go to Uganda Investment Authority offices and ask about the Rising Woman uh, initiative. They will give you all this information. For right. those that cannot mm -hmm. go to these places, you can call 0701 uh, uh, I repeat, mm -hmm. 0701 mm -hmm. 0983. Mm -hmm. You can call me and I'll give you this information. So the, the rising woman is back. Please send in your proposals. The deadline for sending in will be 30th June. Mm -hmm. So please make sure you send in your proposal. Call us, come to DFCU, come to UIA. We shall give you the guidance on how to write your proposal. That is 0701. 77-09-83. All right, get yes. that number, call that number, and you'll be able to get some kind of help. Where is the training going to be, Joshua? In, tr in Lira, mm. we shall have the training at uh, the municipal hall, and that will be on the 30th and 31st. Yeah. Mm. So that is next week, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Mm. So even coming for the trainings, no one is going to be charged. This training is entirely free. So we, we, we just want to make sure that uh, we, we, we help women to scale up their businesses mm. and we are touching those areas that are necessary. For example, if you look in the past two years, digital operations are some of the things that mm. have come out strongly. Mm. Okay. So if we, if we are to help women, mm. we need to, they need to know how to operate their businesses on a digital scale. Wow, yes. that is so another that conversation is that, that you've very just very opened <laughs> up. Yes. Ha, ah, women taking advantage of the digital space. Uh, Ruth Asasida, we're talking about low penetration of internet levels, especially yeah. in the rural areas where our women, you know, in business are, especially in agribusiness. How are you going to be able to reach out to these women in, in that regard? How difficult or easy is, it, easy is it going to be for them to actually get onto the internet and be able to maximize on those technological advancements, given the fact that, that they are not technologically savvy at mm. all? Mm. Many, many actually are illiterate. Mm. 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 So one of the things that we have different platforms as a bank yes. um, that enable transactions uh, for these businesses. Mm. So one of them is quick banking, uh, but our quick banking platform is actually uh, both on USSD. Mm. So even on Akatoch, uh, someone can dial star 240 hash and then they access um, uh, and transact mm. to the bank. Uh, and transact even across mm -hmm. uh, their colleagues in business using that. But one other factor that we are considering as a special segment is to onboard these women mm -hmm. through their groups, uh, especially those in the rural sector. So we're looking at women who are already mm -hmm. in established groups, um, in cooperatives, uh, in VSLAs and circles, and through that it becomes better for them to be onboarded. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a platform for investment clubs um, which takes care of circles, investment clubs, mm -hmm. as well as um, as well as the VSLAs. So mm -hmm. these uh, these organized groups can actually transact uh, 
using the Katoch um, Star 240 hash, access the investment club uh, platform, but also transact through that. Mm. Uh, but also a lot of trainings that are ne there's, ne there's need for digital literacy. And this digital literacy, again, to the woman at the grassroots, right now we are going we are doing it through the groups mm. that organize the, uh, the organized groups mm. but i i agree with you there's still a lot that needs to be done uh, in terms of onboarding that mm. one of the components that we have introduced among the three categories in rising uh, woman this mm. year is a component of digital innovation and e-commerce. Mm. So we want to recognize those women businesses that have taken advantage of the digital platforms mm. to actually say now we recognize times are changing, so we want to actually uh, onboard our businesses online, mm. but to also create those that have created business models mm. that are digitally, um, mm. that, 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 ha that have um, that have digital models for mm. example so that's why we have introduced a component of uh, uh, innovation and e-commerce yes Joshua Twalama what are some of the challenges affecting the entrepreneur the female entrepreneur in 2022 moving forward besides COVID-19 of course the policy environment the harsh tax regimen what are we talking what do I what are we looking at mm. uh, certainly COVID uh, we cannot overlook mm. it because uh, uh, prior to 2020, when yes. COVID was at its peak, uh, you realize that uh, even the economy as a whole had picked up. Mm. Uh, and likewise, uh, women entrepreneurship had also grown, mm. uh, which takes us back to what I mentioned, the MasterCard report. Mm. You realize that uh, there are so many women coming up with new things. Mm. Now, um, currently in 2022, mm. um, you can see there is recovery, recovery in, yeah. uh, in the business sense, but still the challenges are there. Uh, like Ruth mentioned, <coughs> capital mm. access to capital. Uh, most of the women, uh, you realize that they're engaged in small, small businesses, micro businesses. And these businesses, uh, many of them are not captured in the uh, tax system. Mm. Uh, they are not, uh, they are not uh, in the, say, UIA system. Mm. So if this woman wanted to get a loan from a bank, mm. you realize that they go through a lot of challenges. Mm. And uh, that is what some of, uh, those are some of the things that uh, the rising woman is here to solve. Uh, but also... Registration of the businesses. Yes, mm. registration of the businesses. Poor record keeping. Exactly. Mm. And uh, UIA has solved that with a one-stop center. I see. So that uh, if you're starting up a b business, you can easily get a team. You can easily uh, register with URSB so that uh, your business is formalized. If you do not have formalization in a business, mm. it would even be very hard for you to scale to the next mm. level. Because in the event you want to, if you start up a business, for example, your supply, your 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 coming, your your, your supplying mandazi to mm. NTV. Indeed. At a certain point, NTV will want to pay you through uh, an invoice. Mm. Mm. And for, for you to be paid through an invoice, it means your business has to be registered through the systems. Mm. So if we do not align that, it means we shall keep facing these challenges. Indeed. Because mm. where we are going, the world is a global village. What you do in Kampala can directly impact another person in Kavale, mm. but also can impact a person it's a in, value uh, chain. in the United States. Mm. We've seen in Sudan going as far as the United <laughs> States. Mm. So if we issue. do not mm. formalize our businesses, then we, we are basically uh, uh, lying to ourselves. Indeed. So we need mm. to come up with systems where women are captured into the uh, legal system of mm. doing business. So that is one of the biggest uh, factors mm. uh, that is affecting. So register your business and have it mm. captured within the data system. Ruth Asasida, what needs to be done or what should I have at the back of, um, of my mind as a woman entrepreneur before kickstarting any business to ensure resilience and, and uh, so that it meets its first or second birthday? Yeah, so one of the things that mm. um, should be like Joshua, like Joshua said mm. earlier is uh, registration, uh, making sure that your business, first of all, is legalized. Uh, you have um, you have registered uh, mm. uh, across uh, all the um, 
if it's URSB, um, if uh, you need to identify the partners uh, who are going to help you financially, but also other partners that will support you, give advisory services. So like I said, our DFC Women mm. in Business, we are there to say if you're starting um, or at the growth stage or established stage, we have all the different uh, platforms that will enable mm. you start your business, but also grow it uh, and scale it up. And also doing research. It's really yes. important. Yes. Mm. Is there yes. a market for the you know, business that I'm trying to do? You can be doing a business. Yes. I mean, it's no market for, yes. for the same. So mm. before you initiate any business, first do some kind of a research mm. to find out how much is the demand. The Are people really market. clamoring for the same? Yeah. The market is, there a market? is actually there. Mm. And, uh, and, I, and I want to rally the women not to look at only the Ugandan mm. market. How you add value to your product can unlock mm. even mm. bigger markets outside Uganda. Mm. Yes. So um, the women you should uh, put emphasis on value addition. Right. If you're in a business of Nsenene, uh, like I said, how can you package Nsenene so good that Someone is coerced uh, to sell on CNN in South Africa, indeed. to sell on CNN in the UK. Indeed. Yes. That is Joshua Twalama, Senior Promotions Officer with the NMG. He was not alone. Ruth Sassira from uh, DFCU. She's the manager of Women in Business. She was also here with us. Thank you so much, Ruth Sassira, for coming thank through. You. And also thank you to Joshua Twalama for coming through. Thank, thank you. For All that. right. So that's it for that conversation. Rising woman, please do some research. And also, we do have so much that is actually uh, in store for you courtesy of the rising woman we are in litter please look out for